this is going to be that continuation of the more circle derivation video uh, where I started out with that plane, uh, plane P. And I had four terms in the last video uh, that we had come up with. Two expressions were for, for tau or shear stress, and two expressions were for the normal stress. So now what we're going to do is set those terms equal to each other. So let's start with these normal stresses. We're going to set sigma 1 cosine theta minus the shear stress sine theta over cosine theta. We're going to set that equal to sigma 3 sine theta plus tau cosine theta over sine theta. So we've set those equal to each other. Um, now what we're going to do is um, cross multiply. So we're going to multiply everything on, um, well actually, I don't think in this one I chose to do that. I think what, I, what I'd rather do here, because I noticed I've got some things that could cancel, let's go ahead and let's get those out of the way. So I'm going to do uh, sigma 1 cosine theta over cosine theta minus tau sine theta over cosine theta. And I'm going to divide sine up on this side too. The reason why I did that is now these cosines will cancel and those sines will cancel. So this is just going to leave me with uh, sigma 1 minus tau sine theta cosine theta and then these are going to cancel and just leave me with a sigma 3. Okay, now I'm going to group those two um, terms together and then I'm also going to bring the taus together and factor out a tau. So that should give me sigma 1, um, we're going to subtract sigma 3 to this side. And then we're going to add this term over here and again factor out that tau. So sine theta, cosine theta, plus cosine theta, sine theta. Now to be able to get these terms to really add together, I'm going to have to multiply this side by sine theta over sine theta and this side by cosine theta over cosine theta. So think about it as having a tiny multiplication in here. This is sine theta over sine theta and cosine theta over cosine theta. And I know I can do that because anything over itself is just one and you're always allowed to multiply by one. So I'm going to do some of that multiplication now. So I'm going to have sine squared theta and cosine squared theta. And I know that that's going to be over. Uh, my new denominator is cosine theta sine theta. Okay. Now, there is a rule in trig that says whenever you have sine theta plus cosine theta, and they're both squared, so it's actually sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, that the addition of those two things is just one. Uh, and that's a, a rule that goes back to the, using the unit circle and its derivation. So they have the same denominator. What we can say now is sigma one minus sigma three is shear stress times one over cosine theta sine theta. And now I can multiply both sides by cosine theta sine theta. And now I have an awesome expression for shear stress in terms of the principal stresses. Now I can do the same thing for the normal stresses. Um, I would set those equal to each other. So we would have sigma 1 cosine theta minus sigma n 
cosine theta over sine theta and sigma n sine minus sigma 3 sine over cosine. And I think this is the one where I chose to cross multiply because if I did it, all of these were cosines and this was a cosine. And so in this situation, there's really nothing I can cancel. So if you end up cross multiplying, the cool thing is you end up with um, sigma one cosine squared theta, sigma n cosine squared theta, So now I've got these sine squared terms and cosine squared terms, and I can kind of do the same thing I did last time using those, the, the knowledge that those squared terms give me one um, to unify um, some terms. So I can group this one, for example, this term with this term and factor out the, um, the sigma n, and then I would get a one. So let's just see what that looks like. I'm going to subtract this over to this side. Factor out that sigma n, add this over. So this is the number one. And this is our term, our expression to solve for the normal stress. Okay. So now I've got a pretty good um, expression for the normal stress and a pretty good expression for the shear stress. But the problem is I've got some weird angles involved. Like this one's got some, some squared angles. And so it's preferable that we would substitute this in with something that doesn't have to be squared. So what we have to know are some of our, our what are called double angle formulas. And so those double angle, angle sorry, formulas that we're going to use are sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta, that cosine of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, um, and cosine of 2 theta is actually also 2 times cosine squared theta minus 1, sine squared theta is then 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2, and cosine squared theta is then 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. All right, so those are our important trig identities. So now what we can do is like if we go back to that formula for shear stress, where we had a sine theta times cosine theta, we can just sub in for sine theta, cosine theta, two sine theta over two. So that expression for shear stress becomes sigma one minus sigma three, so that part doesn't change. But again, that cosine sine becomes sine of two theta over two. And so that's our expression for shear stress. And let's do the same thing um, for those squared angles for sigma 2. So we've got 1. We'll substitute in that cosine 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2 for the cosine squared theta. We'll substitute in ooh, 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2 for the um, sine squared. And then if you look at this, what you're going to end up having is a lot of sigma 1 and sigma 3 over 2 terms. And then you're going to have, like if we were to multiply this in, so we would get sigma 1 over 2, sigma 1 cosine 2 theta over 2. And so we would multiply that across and then we'd be able to start grouping. So let's go ahead and do that. Sigma one over two. Uh, 
And I'm just working all these out because I, I remember when I was an undergrad and I always felt like when people didn't show it, it just skipped some steps. And then I always felt like I was guessing like where the, where the step fell into place. So I'd rather just show it. So now I'm going to group this term with this term and I'm going to group this term with this term. So we're going to get sigma 1 plus sigma 3 over 2 plus cosine 2 theta plus sigma 1. Whoops, this should be minus. Minus sigma 3 over 2. Okay. Now here's the thing that makes it a more circle. That, that makes these formulas valuable for a Mohr circle. One is that we have sigma n and, and shear stress, that we have those two equations in terms of the principal stresses and an angle. That is really, really important that we have that. Um, because if you think about how like a, a test gets done on to, to determine rock strength, you're, you're you know, increasing sigma 1 and sigma 3 if you're doing a triaxial test or just sigma 1 if you're doing a uniaxial test, um, sigma 3 being 0 then. And so from that, you could calculate the shear strength of the rock and the normal strength of the rock or, or stresses at failure. So that, that's part of why that becomes really important. And in terms of calculating the Mohr circle, if you have um, any two principal stresses that you're imposing upon a rock, you could then calculate the shear stress and normal stresses for all of the different angles associated with it. So you could make a little table, and I think this is really cool. If you've never done this before, you should try it. Make yourself a little table with a sigma, or with a theta, a sigma n, and a tau, and then give yourself a range of angles 75, 90. Give yourself a range of angles and then just pick a sigma 1 and sigma 2. Like let's say a sigma 1 of 20, or no, sorry, a sigma 3 of like 10. What you're going to find is that you're going to be able to calculate sigma n for these values and tau for each of these values. And then when you go to plot it, you're going to plot your sigma 3 and your sigma 1 on your normal axis and then those other points are going to plot like that and you're going to actually be able to connect it and if you did the negative values connect it into a circle and so that's where that more circle is coming from you're you're finding all of the combinations for stress that's oriented at different angles on that plane um, so the circle allows us to estimate the stresses on any orientation of a plane as long as we're given the angle of that plane sigma 1 and sigma 3 or we have sigma n and the shear stress. So hope that derivation helped. Thanks.